Hey gang, Jackalair here, and as you can tell, we're going to be playing some uh, Warhawk on the PS1. This is from uh, 1995, coincidentally the year that I graduated high school. Now, when I picked this game up, uh, Old School instantly said that he loved this game, so here we are uh, giving it a shot. Now, the game company that made this is Single Track, which I didn't know up until a little bit of research that they made this game, and they also are responsible for the Twisted Metal as well as the Jet Moto series, both of which are awesome series. Series? 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 Whatever the plural of series is. But this is uh, Warhawk, uh, the Red Mercury missions. Now, the first one was originally a side scroller. And it'll just kind of, you know, run the autoplay there if you let it. But, so there's a, a kind of cool menu system. And I went into this game knowing absolutely nothing. So, you can adjust the options. There's Veteran, Granny, and Ace. Uh, I think I left it on Veteran. Yeah, Controls, Precision, I don't know what all this does. And then there's weapon information. This was actually really helpful. Uh, I mean, I did have the manual, so I could have just looked at it, but it lets you know that this is the Warhawk, the vehicle that you're flying around in. And we're also going to go through some of the weapons, such as the machine guns. Kind of let you know. I didn't look up the strength, though. But it, you've got the machine guns, you've got rockets unguided missiles. You've got swarm missiles, which are uh, quickly became my favorite type of missile. I didn't really like the the, the next group of missiles, which I think is the lock-on. Yeah, the lock-on missiles. I really didn't like those. Yeah, they're not as agile as the swarmers. Then there's the plasma cannon. Um, that I really didn't find as fun either. Flash bomb. Never even got it. Keep in mind, I only played this for a little bit. And there's a Doomsday Bomb, the ultimate weapon. Dun dun dun. Yeah, I do like the menus. They're very, uh, they're very of that time. And here's where it gets awesome: full motion video. Yes. The last strike against Creel was wiped out in less than an hour after they lost contact. I'm not losing my pilots, because you can't cut through some interference. Those are my people down there, so find a way. Commander, intelligence can't find anything on this Creel guy. Creel's army can appear out of nowhere, set up installations, and vanish. No one knows how or why. I don't like mysteries, Corporal. They have a way of killing people. Make sure that ship's 110% ready. If Creel's army really has these super weapons, I want as much data as I can get. I gotta break in here. I really hate when anybody says 110%. I just, I despise it. It's pet peeve of mine. And here come our heroes. Hatch, Walker. You've read the mission briefs? Creel's army keeps popping up all over the place. The last time they showed up, Strike Force Alpha went after them. There wasn't enough of them left to fill a Boy Scout troop. I'm trying to figure out how there wasn't enough to fill a Boy Scout troop. I, I really want to know. I'm just not sure. Using some kind of new fuel source, and I want you two to find it. Nothing like a little search and destroy, right, Hatch? Walker, you misread your briefing. I want you to go into the hot. I love that the look on his face. Just, I just imagine internally him going. Oh. All right. Now you may be looking at this and going, "All right, all the knobs and switches and knobs and switches. What what does all of this mean? This looks dumb." But you got to remember in 1995, that was perfectly plausible to be like, "Oh yeah, we're going to have of course we're going to be turning knobs and switches and Stuff like that. Now, okay, so let me start out with the fact that the analog controls do nothing. 
so there is no analog control in this game. So it is all uh, essentially you you have to fly around with the D-pad. You can turn with the R1 and R2. You can lean, which makes you turn faster. Uh, I'm trying to remember all the controls. One button shoots. One button. Makes you go faster. I never figured out how to slow down. I think I pushed all the buttons, but none of them slowed me down. But, yeah, I also really don't know what I'm doing. So I was just kind of flying around. The good thing is, is that the, the shields do slowly recharge, which is nice. So if you're a complete dingbat like me, who can't fly, obviously the shield would recharge over time. Okay, this may come into play later on down the road, I'm not sure, but I have noticed that my little screen is a replica of what I can see outside. So I'm only guessing that that'll come into play uh, later on down the road if there's a night mission or something like that where I need to be able to see. But it's just weird that that's... Like, I'm seeing what I'm seeing. Which doesn't make a lot of sense, but I mean, hey, it's a it's a PS1 game, so a lot of them don't. But as you can see, I don't know. I mean, what you're supposed to be doing is that big thing in the center. Where I'm supposed to be blowing up those, but I'm just screwing around blowing up other stuff because I don't know what to do. Uh, I do catch on here in a little bit, but for the most part, I just fly around shooting stuff. Uh, I don't like the handling. Um, I'm pretty sure that I would get used to it after a while, but I just... I was not into flying games on any console ever. So when when playing this, it just it strikes me as odd. And I would rather be playing it on the PC. I don't know. But it's... The game is for 1995. This is pretty impressive because I've got a—I mean, I've got a radar going on, and I've got stuff blowing up. I've got missiles. The missiles have, you know, they have little trails that they do. I can shoot. We've got stuff flying all over. We've got tanks. We've got turrets. We've got planes. All the stuff that's going on right now is really, really impressive. Uh oh, shield failure. That can't be good. Hey, I found a way to stop. I just have to blow up a tank and then fly right into the wreckage and I'll stop. And then I'll get blown up as... Ooh, that's not good. I'm not, I don't see, I, you don't think I'm getting better, but I really am. Uh, because I'm actually trying to use the other weapons, mainly because I think I'm out of the swarm missiles. But, you know, I do try and use the gun here a little bit. And, uh, you know, it's, it's 
this game is hard. This game is not messing around, and it's uh, in the style of the the old games where you would, you know, you would not beat this game in a weekend. And I think that's one of the things that I really miss is that when, and you know, call, call me old-fashioned, but you used to have to. I mean, beating a game used to be a badge of honor. Like you, you really, really put in the time to beat a game. Like if you find somebody who beat Blaster Master, they had way too much time. I love that game, and I never beat it. Same right, same out there with Fester's Quest. Do you ever find anybody who beat that game? And they rented it, and that was their only rental for the week, or something along those lines. Because otherwise, you're like, no, I'm good. Oh, they're uh, uh, pickups. So when you kill turrets, some of the turrets leave little things behind. So I got my shields recharged. There's another one that refuels uh, missiles, which is kind of cool. And then, but anyways, so for instance, a lot of people are like, well, we want people to finish finish the game. Yeah, see, I'm not doing anything with that cannon. But kind of like everybody finished, everybody that played Portal can finish Portal. And there are just some some games that you just can't finish from back in the day. Unless you've got a lot of time and a lot of patience. It's one of the things I realized going back to playing PS1 games. Is that there is a certain level of... Kind of a certain level of, of screw you in the game. Like if you're not good enough, you won't get to the end. Because when you're looking at, uh, uh oh, once again, not good. Need to get out of there. But so when you're playing a lot of the older games, there is a definite. Uh oh. You guys okay? Think so. What happened? Emergency teleport. Tough to pull off without a telepad, but we got lucky this time. We scraped this ship together out of salvage. There should be enough power to complete your mission. Well, that was a kind of a cool way to do survival lives. Uh, anyways, so like I was mentioning, uh, you know, Finishing games. It's weird. It used to be easy, or it used to be ridiculously hard. Now it's kind of not. I mean, th don't get me wrong, the games are still hard, and you can jack up the difficulty to make them ridiculously hard. See, I finally figured out what to do now. So now we get the fun cutscene. Oh, look at these amazing graphics. And I'm not, I'm not joking. These are amazing for 1995. You gotta keep in mind that 1995 is a long time ago, kids. Long time ago. Yeah, of course it still takes me a while to figure out that I have to shoot down at the little lower things, not at the, the big things up above. give you an idea of the graphical quality of this game is that this is a game. This is an interactive game going on here. This is interactive. It's got to keep track of AI and all kinds of other fun stuff. Babylon 5 premiered one year before this game, the series, in the U.S. anyways. So that's pretty, you know, one year before that we were getting Babylon 5 style graphics, which for those of you who don't know who, what Babylon 5 is, um, just go to Google, I'm pretty sure it's on Hulu and Netflix and everything else, and just watch the first episode. And that's the level of, those were cutting edge graphics at the time for a TV show. So that's why this is really awesome. It's a little too... I don't know, it almost feels like a weird 3D bullet hell shooter, but I don't know, it's fun, at least this level. I 
and I'll just leave it at that. notice it looking like I'm oversteering, that's because I am. Because the weird thing about this game is that, or actually the cool thing about it, well, depends on how you look at it, but when you stop turning, the ship takes a little while to shift back, so it keeps banking a little bit. Which is really cool. Oh, I did something. Oh, yeah. Now... I just cannot fly this stupid thing. Mission complete. Time for some more FMV. Oh, ho, 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 yeah. Don't bother getting out. Your ship's rearmed and they're unloading the canister you brought back now. There's another site about 50 clicks out that's shrouded in that same interference you just left. Creel's forces? Wait a minute, you're sending us out there again? You got a better idea, Walker? It's a canyon zone. Your ship's the most maneuverable one we've got left. And that weird interference is blocking everything. I need a status report. For the record, this level is as far as I've made it in the game. Because this level can go straight to hell. I just, I, I hate canyons. I hate the fact that I can't, I mean, I can't strafe. I know I can't strafe. Unless someone knows a way for me to do that, but I don't know how to slow down. I run into all kinds of crap. I just, This, this is where the entire game turned on me. And I'm pretty sure I'll come back and try and play it again, but... Because I was actually getting the hang of the controls. I just want to know how to slow down. Which I didn't see in the options. So maybe I'm... Maybe I'm just not smart enough. I don't know. But yeah, there are little turrets on the walls all over the place. Um... I can't. I gotta get going that way, but I can't. Just... Eject, eject, eject! And I am teleported. I barely got you guys. Prepare for immediate reinsertion. About the only good thing about this level, or the only good thing that this level showed me, is that once you destroy things, they stay destroyed. So for instance, when the little cannons on the wall were gone, they were gone when I got back. So that was nice. So I didn't have to re-kill the things I'd already shot. Sadly, it also meant that I was very confused because it's like right now I don't know what I'm getting shot at by. And then there's this stupid thing. It's essentially a giant... I don't know, it looks like the weird droid thing from... from the Hoth levels. You guys know what I'm talking about. And it's just kind of stuck there on the plateau. And then I've got to try and destroy different parts of it. But since I don't know how to slow down or stop, which, you know, 
granted, that's probably all me. I have a hard time turning around in a box canyon. And yes, I know it's not really a box canyon. I know that it's just I'm in a one end of it, but it's just, it's dumb. Now that that is down, that means the force field's down, and I can continue. Alright. I'm not going to speed up a whole lot, because I know me. What is shooting me? Oh, there's something else. Another turret up there. Yeah, I see it now. And now there's some mines. Let's see if I can manage to shoot them without running into them. Oh, I'm learning. I'm learning. No! Uh oh, shield failure. Oh, what are those? Crap, crap. Radar destroyed. Oh. And that's the end of us. The forces find our remains smoldering in the wreckage. Aha, our head is brought back as, and mounted on the pole. Wow, not only do they let you know that you died, they also let you know how badly you have messed up. That is just rough. But there you go, and then it goes into credits. Uh, so yeah. There's uh, the, some gameplay of Warhawk, uh, one of old school's favorite games. And I'm going to sign off because uh, that game's really hard. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, as always, it's been a pleasure and play on.